On day one of town meeting, Articles 1 through 9 passed unanimously, and the first debate of the night was over Article 10. The fiscal 2020 operating budget raised some debate over the underride. And given that the town has had many surprise expenses in the past year, and given that nobody is going to get a tax rebate as a result of any underride, I submit, Mr. Moderator, that the town should have a voice in whether this proposed underride is prudent. So therefore I propose an amendment, or a, uh, I propose that we vote separately on the, on the underride. Because what it says up there is, appropriation committee recommends approval. And That's, that still holds. But they just said they didn't vote on it. <laughs> they didn't know it was in there, so how can they recommend? So, I, I, and again, I, I think, well, the reason I'm up here is because I think that's a valid question if... Hold on, then hold on a second. Mr. Manning, would you address uh, the, the position of the Appropriations Committee with respect to Article 10 as it is currently constructed? They said they weren't aware of it. Right. So we voted on it, essentially, uh, they voted to, approve, to approve the operational budget. Right. And we also did see today that it, there was a non-binding part to have a underwrite. So since it's non-binding and there's still a vote, it really has no overall impact on the operational budget. So we could have re-voted it, we could have discussed it, but we don't have a particular position on the underwrite itself. Our position is approving the budget. Mr. Moderator, I, I as the maker of the motion, I would accept uh, instead to simply delete the underwrite section, the non-binding underwrite part of the budget. There was a motion to change language regarding the underride. The motion passed, and the $92 million plus town budget for fiscal year 2020 was then voted through. $92.7 million. Article 11, fiscal year 2020 revolving fund spending limits. Articles 11 through 20 passed unanimously, while Article 21, the purchase of a multi-purpose municipal tractor for $177,000 raised some debate. Francis DeYoung, 3 Doyle Lane. Uh, John, is this incremental to the two existing blowers that you mentioned previously? Through the moderator, yes it is. And just what's the rationale for adding a third? Have we been, have we been neglecting because we don't have the ability or capacity or is this kind of used to be a long-term replacement for one of the other two? Uh, through the moderator, we currently remove snow from a network of approximately 17 miles of sidewalk. Um, it takes roughly 8 to 16 hours with the two vehicles that we have. And we have to take operators that have been out working for hours or perhaps days working on the roads. So we take them out and we put them in these two vehicles. It takes 8 to 16 hours. With a third vehicle, we'll be able to clear the snow and provide safe travel on the sidewalks in a much more efficient and quick manner. The article then passed the majority. Article 22 and Article 53 both passed. Article 53 was moved up since it was related to Article 22. Article 23, the sidewalk master plan, raised a whole lot of debate due to the proposal to construct a sidewalk along West Main Street. In lanes, we have several things going on right there. We have a right hand, we have two right hand turn lanes, then we have an exit that's supposed to merge into, and you're not supposed to make a left, but they always want to merge right in front of Cumbies. They come dashing down and merge ahead. So that's fine, I don't care, I'm old. I, <laughs> I can afford five minutes. But you can't afford to have people hit there, and I do think that that's what it's going to lead to. There's not, simply not enough space in the camp of the hill and the desire of kids, young people driving, people driving home who can't spend, <laughs> they come up behind me now. It's a dis I think it's a disaster waiting to happen. The article failed the required two-thirds majority with 124 voting for and 103 voting against the article.
The final article of the night, Article 24, School Bus Parking Lot, raised some debate. The article would allocate $300,000 to construct a school bus parking lot at town-owned 90 Hayden Row. At the middle school and now the high school for several years, I think this redesign is entirely warranted. Um, the parking lot improvement, um, getting the school buses out of the flow of the parent traffic would be a, a great benefit. The additional money that's being asked for, 300000 according to the numbers that were just shown, which are, I assume, the most current numbers, would be paid for in three years. Um, this seems to me to be a great investment of the town's money, and I would support it. Thanks. The article did pass the required two-thirds majority by standing vote, with 146 voting for and 60 voting against.